Hello, I said I was going to make a quick video of my Muller motor uh, being driven by a model aircraft outrunner motor. Now, um, it's, a small, it's a little small little motor and it's been running off a 12 volt power source. I've had some trouble with vibration, but I think I've got that all sorted out. Uh, I had to make uh, up some really good shafts because it's, it's a direct drive coupling. Um, I did away with that universal joint and I've gone for a direct shaft. Um, so it was necessary to machine something up at the end of the day, which I didn't. I did it myself on the, on the drill press. I didn't bother with um, getting a friend of mine to make anything on a lathe. It wasn't that hard, but it just it just took a bit of time. So, spinning nice and freely, and as we know, it looks like to violate Lens law, um, a lot of other people are starting to now. Um, see that the frequency of the magnets switching past the coils is what's going to basically get us there. I found with my previous experiments, if you've been following me on the NGN forum, that I needed to get over at least 4000 RPM to get um, some sort of acceleration, not just under a dead short, but actually under a load that we could actually draw power from. You can't do much with a dead short and you can't do much with um, a, a, you know, a very light load. You need a good load. Um, so, yeah, but you still need a voltage potential so you can draw current. So it looked to be around about the 4000 RPM. I noticed there's been a few other videos on YouTube um, using a similar setup. So I'm hoping to actually take this now to the next level because uh, um, you can see through here I haven't actually got uh, any um, coils in place at the moment. I've taken out all my old mirror coils. Um, at the moment I've still got the, um, the big 20 millimeter magnets in place on the rotor. I've had a few at the high RPM. I had a few of these little um, neos come flying out. Well, these are the hall neos. I'm going to remove them. I obviously don't need them anymore because uh, we don't need to drive it that way. I'm going to get rid of these 20 millimeter magnets. I'm going to put uh, my 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter magnets in place with my iron, with my iron laminated cores. I'm going to mount these these coils here. Um, like this top and bottom um, and also I've got some uh, ferrite uh, powder coming from the United States which I'm really looking forward to getting because I want to make some cores and I want to custom mine some coils so I'm looking forward to getting that up and running as well so anyway um, just to give you a demonstration on the RPM um, okay I'll just okay here we go Uh, this is just the first click on the PWM. Okay. This is, as I said, this is just starting up now. T4, T5. I've got to hold it pretty steady because I need to keep it right on the right on the uh, uh, taco tape. And if I can just raise the speed a bit, we're already getting 3,000 RPM without any effort at all. You could get 4,000. The torque this thing generates, it starts to move around on the bench because of the gyroscopic effect. 5,000. And it's beautiful and quiet and smooth. So I've got a good RPM range to play with for my, for my research. But I'm after. And it's pretty cool.
the vibration I was getting before, um, I, I've made about three or four different couplings because I had to get them exactly right. I was only able to get to about 7,000 RPM because the vibration was um, obviously holding it back. But we are going to basically go throughout the end of the year as much as efficiently as possible. This is just that breaking as well can be quite useful. But we can control the RPM, I can dial in whatever I want. So I can take notes of different RPM. Just as a, a beginning pulse motor set up, it, it's basically you, it's very difficult to control. And I've got quite a few of these little um, outrunners sitting around in boxes, so I'm looking forward to building a much bigger one. Uh, I've got my bigger motor still just sitting over here, um, which I'm going to turn around and show you. Yeah, you all recognise that one. So, as you know, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to basically build a, uh, a coupling and put an outrunner attached to that one as well. Uh, that's, but I want to get back. I want to. I really want to get back to the Moolah. You can see the. Um, and at the moment, I'm still using an RC control system to control it with. Um, but we'll change that. I'll I'll use a little uh, pick micro to to set up a servo PWM. That's the, that's the speed controller, just there. It's a. Uh, and these, these things are mad. It's a 60 amp speed controller. It's only worth about $20, $30, I think, on eBay. I bought it some time ago. Um, and there's the 12 volt battery. Um, in the next video, I want to get the magnets in place and stuff. The new magnets will lighten the rotor, I'm hoping. So when I get them in place, uh, I'll, get, I'll get some current readings. But pretty much it, at 4,000 RPM, my previous current readings were between 1.2 to 1.5 amps at 8,000 at RPM. It does chew a bit of current. But of course, you know, you get the RPM up, we get other things. But I'm hoping to see, um, like, very soon, um, some acceleration under load, um, which, will which will relieve the drag on the motor. The motors are very sensitive. You put any drag on them, they show immediate increase in current loading back to the battery. Uh, so it's a very, they're a very useful tool for, for measuring load, um, resistance, and stuff like that. Very excited about uh, the next phase of this work.